Hi guys, welcome back to another interview with the Health and Wellness Summit. My name is Courtney Miracle. I am the host. I have today with me uh, Nicole Leonamari, like Calamari. That's how she told me to remember her last name. So Nicole, welcome. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. How are you? I'm good. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about um, about what you do. Um, sure. So I am the owner and founder of My Gut Hut, and we focus on the gut, but also the mind and the whole mind body gut coherence because it's so so crucial. Um, so that's what we're all about. Mind gut body connection. I love it. I love it. So um, Nicole's going to share with us today a little bit more um, about the gut and why it's so important. So uh, Nicole, can you share with us kind of what you walk your clients through when they come to you? Like, why do they come to you when they realize there's stuff going on with their gut and how does it change their life? Sure. Well, the gut is everything. And we're really not taught that in society. And I think that's where like the missing link is. Yes, functional medicine, I think they're catching on. But if you look at gut health now, they it's like a new thing, but it's nothing new. <laughs> We've had guts for years. And if you looked at how we were you know, treated years ago, 100, 200 years ago, it was all the entire person. So I think now we're so focused as a society treating the symptom and not really where the root and where it's really stemming from. And obviously if we have gut issues, it can stem from past trauma, what we're eating, what we're thinking, and you know what we're predisposed to, but that's not always what we're predisposed to is what's gonna happen. So gut health is just crucial because it runs our entire body from moods to thoughts really, um, to weight management, everything. So we have to really address that first, first and foremost, first and foremost, easy for me to say. So yes, really with my, yeah, with my clients, I'm sure you see it with yours too. We always have symptoms. There's always stuff going on and it's like, okay, well, where do we start? And I say like, my motto is you heal your gut, heal your mind, heal your mind, heal your gut, because they're so connected. You know, we see now with the research that they're coming out with, which I'm sure it's been there for years, there's more <laughs> signals going from our gut to our mind. So it's almost, I always say what came first, you know, the chicken or the egg, the mind or the gut, but because our gut really starts forming in the womb, it's not sterile like they thought it was, you know, and it, depending on how a child is born, vaginal or C-section, that really dictates a lot of what your life is going to be like. Plus, what were you being fed as a kid? What was your environment as a child? My screen just went dark. Can you see me? I can that's really weird. Okay. Um, so <laughs> what you're reading and then antibiotics, that's a huge, it wipes out the good and the bad bacteria, which nobody really ever talks about. I know when I was a kid, I was on a ton of antibiotics and the doctor's like, Oh, just have yogurt. My mom always said, just have yogurt when you're having antibiotics. Well, why? Right. We have to replenish that good bacteria that we're getting rid of. So when you take all these different factors, the food environment, what medicines and how we're upbringing was, it really creates our gut. Our gut is, you know, it's a, like an ecosystem, right? It's a rainforest, all these different bacteria, And well, there's good and bad. And we have to have the balance between the good and bad to have a healthy life. So yeah. I love that. So I think what's so interesting is there is more and more of like normal, whatever, general media, right? About gut mm -hmm. health. But I think what, what I loved about what you said is that you're like, it's not just what you eat, right? There's all these other factors so can you explain to, to the listeners, how does like your upbringing and like, how's your mood affected by your gut? Sure. Well, I think we all have every house, there's always some type of dynamic. So when we grow up in a stressful household, whether your parents are fighting, there's situations, whatever really is considered stress for that person or that child, that stress directly affects the gut. And it basically breaks down our gut. We have to remember that our gut is really only one cell wall thick. Right. So when you take all these factors into, you know, what you're eating and what you're surrounded by, plus the toxins, you know, not only what you're eating, but what air fresheners or what soap you're using. It's just, it's, and when you're, when you're so young, your body's just soaking up all that stuff. You know, our skin's our biggest organ. It's sucking in everything. But when it comes to, you know, situations with family, I always say, you know, it doesn't matter what the situation was, your parents divorced, like minded, that was a huge issue for me. You know, my parents went to get, you know, remarried, um, food. Well, you know, I think it was probably better back then, but now we've just gotten in society, just all this fast food because everybody's in a rush. So it all takes into effect. So when our gut is just broken down to all these different factors and we're not repopulated with good bacteria, it's causing the bad bacteria to basically overtake your gut. 
And then that's going to be seg sending signals, whether it's, hey, you know, feed me. Like if you're craving sugar all the time, you're craving those carbs. Granted, who doesn't love a piece of bread with butter? I do. And I also love chocolate. But if I'm like constantly craving or someone's constantly craving that, that's the bad bacteria saying, hey, feed me. And that's what we don't want. And then it's almost like a, the vicious cycle. Okay, well, you know, maybe you're eating because you're stressed out and you're not eating the right foods. And then you're craving that food and then you're gaining weight. And all of these things, it's like, you gotta, you have to stop it. You really have to stop it in the gut. Yeah, yeah I love that. So when you work with your clients, how do you go about helping them create a strategy to start to heal their gut um, and, then, and, and then deal with the other aspects of their life that are being, that are being affected by their past trauma or, or by their gut and or by their gut. Yeah. So I, um, I don't believe in omitting entire food groups for forever because it's not sustainable and our body needs all the foods. So I omit really for 30 to 60 days, certain foods, excuse me, um, to heal the gut. I do have a tool. It's a gut product. It's a food, it's actual food, um, that I implement. It's just one modality. And then we address it by food, by really what and how we're going to eat, what issues are they dealing with. Um, and we mostly omit meat because that can be a gut disruptor. It takes a long time for the body to digest it. Um, we omit beans and stuff like that um, because that can cause a lot of issues. And again, our gut is one cell wall thick. And I always like to say, if you take a piece of sandpaper in your hand and you rub it once, you're going to be okay. You rub it over and over and over again, you're, you're going to have some an issue. <laughs> so when you take out the disrupting foods temporarily allows your gut to heal quicker. And then once that 30 to 60 days is over, cause our, our gut is very resilient. You know, you give it what the real nutrients that it needs and the food it's going to heal. Then you reintroduce your foods and you live your life. And I say 80, 20 rule, you know, you want to go have that burger and a beer. I'm sorry. I want you to go have that because we have to enjoy our life. And if that's what you want, you should have that should not have to omit for, for forever. That's not that's just not what I'm into. Anyway, so yeah. we focus on that first, right? Because that's also going to repopulate the good bacteria that we need. And because the signals are so much more from our gut to our brain, that starts to change their entire life, really. And then, so we, that's the food. Mindset is crucial. So I have them implement morning and night routines, simple free modalities, literally 15 minutes to a half hour, depending on how much somebody can spend. Um, and it's simple, like gratitude, affirmations, things to help rewire the brain. When we lead in love, we lead from our heart, we appreciate, and we're grateful for what's around us. That really sets the tone for the day. And in the crazy world that we're living in now, it's so crucial to really just keep putting in like, okay, you know, what's my life really looking like? I really appreciate this. And I, it sounds funny and I'm not making fun. I don't care if it's the slippers that you get to put on in the morning you know, or that egg sandwich that you're going to make and go eat with your kids, whatever it is that makes you happy and what you're grateful for, that's what we have to re keep reaffirming. Um, and then we also do stress management because that is huge. We are all so stressed out, right? From the food that we're eating, from the air that we're breathing, from our lifestyle, kids, mom, wife, husband, what doesn't matter. We're hit from all different angles and our body, you know, we're not clinical beings. You know, doctors and society looks at us, oh, you know, just go, go, go. Well, we can't go, go, go all the time. We have to have an outlet. We have to have some type of stress management. So I always say, you know, even if you just take five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night to do nothing, I don't care if you're staring out into space or, you know, whatever, just do nothing for five minutes. Um, so I encourage that. I encourage, hey, laugh every day. I don't care if you had a really, really bad day, go put on something funny. If it's stand up comedy or a show, I had some woman, she told me she loves the golden girls. I'm like, <laughs> I want you to watch that for 15 minutes a day. And she's doing that. So when we, you know, our body doesn't know the difference between an inward and event and a real event and an inward event. So if we can have that emotion, if that happy emotion, whether it's real or not, but we can create that, it actually makes our body create these chemicals that makes it feel like it's a real thing. So that's everything. Like stress management, I think is probably the biggest thing because we're all so stressed. Yes, food is important too, but we have to have an outlet to release, like to really release the day and just have like an USA moment. And that doesn't mean meditating either for hours and hours. You know, when I say stress management, they're like, oh, I can't meditate for an hour. I'm like, just an hour, you don't have to do that. Just take 15 minutes. Just listen to some vibrations or something like that. I do like meditation. If it's prayer, I'm all for that too. 
It's really whatever modality that gets you to be at ease and to be calm. That's what I say. And it's different for everybody. Yeah. Well, and I think it's so important for people to slow down. I mean, I, you know, you don't know much of my backstory, but you know, I had an eating disorder and I then had disordered eating forever and caused a whole bunch of gut issues. Like there's whole, there's whole story there, but that's here nor there. But for me, what I realized was that by controlling my food, I was trying to control my life. Right. And I remember people saying like, oh, eating disorders about control. And I was like, well, that's not true because I'm fully out of control. But when I started to realize it was my sense of certainty, I was like, okay, well, how do I recreate that? And for me, it was a morning routine. It was taking that time and slowing down. And the first day I tried to meditate, which was like a guided meditation, just just laying down, listening to something and not like getting up and going. I was like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. But Mm -hmm. over time, like now I literally get up at 3.20 in the morning because that space that you create in whatever way that feels good for you can literally change your whole life, right? And so getting people to go, what works for them? And I love that that's how you do it. Like what works for you and how do you create that in your life? Not what somebody else is telling you, but understanding like, what do you actually need? Because when you can understand that, and I know you do this with your clients, when they get that, everything else slowly starts to build, right? And then the gratitude at the end of the day, letting go of the stuff, it's like, these aren't mind blowing principles, right? I think people think sometimes it has to be this elaborate scale of what you do. And it's like, no, it doesn't have to. Like those little changes over time make such a big difference. So for a lot of the people coming to you, what symptoms do they have? Or like when they're like, okay, I think I have gut issues or like, what are they experiencing that would make them reach out to you and say, hey, I think I think I need you. I think I need your help. It really varies. So I struggled with autoimmune for years. I had depression and anxiety. So I can speak to the autoimmune anxiety, depression community. And it's more of, it just depends on what they're going through. So I see everything from major autoimmune or they're try, they're actually trying to get diagnosed because they're just all, you know, they have the brain fog. They have, you know, their joints are in pain. They're, they're overweight. They have the gas and bloating. So it's really, it's all over the place. Some people are just not they know that they're not fulfilled. Like they have some major past trauma that they know that they need to address, but therapy has not been working and they've been in therapy for 15, 20 years. Um, and when I'm speaking about my story, that's kind of how people just, you know, gravitate and want to talk because it's a real life thing. I think when we're in the space that we're in, you almost have to have gone through, have to, had to go through it to be able to actually help somebody. Because, you know, if I'm sitting there as a doctor, you know, oh, well, Okay. So you have autoimmune, you'll be fine. That's what I was told. You'll be fine. You know, here, take some more pills. Well, uh, no, that was actually killing me basically not to be funny, it was, you know, but they don't, there has to be, this is heart work. You know, what we do is heart work and there has to be some kind of common ground. Like, oh my God, people are going to want to know, okay, you really understand what it's like when I, you know, see, I had an eating disorder too, anorexic when I was in high school, you know, food is a big deal. The relationship with food is a big deal. And if you didn't go through that and you're trying to help me, you don't really know what's going on. And I say that because I want people to help other people, but there's a certain common ground when somebody has gone through what you've gone through that it just makes the healing that much better. Yeah. Well, it's so much more. Yeah. It's just, it's more authentic and you're like, I've been there. I actually know. And I know where you want it. Like I, like not like the other side, right? I don't believe there's like a here and there, but it's that journey of, of going through it and and understanding it. And, and, And I know when I, started doing this kind of coaching that was the turn your mess into a message. And I was like, now I understand why all of this Mm -hmm. stuff had happened because it led me to exactly where I was supposed to be. Um, And I think giving people that hope as they're on their journey of like, there's a reason life's happening for you and not to you that they start to really gravitate towards that. So I love that so much. So um, tell us kind of what kind of, what what do you offer as far as programs? If someone did want to work with you, what's the time frame and the duration of, of kind of how you work with people? Sure. So I have three main proprietary programs. They range from four weeks to 12 weeks. Um, The first one is a reset that's strictly dealing with the gut microbiome. So I put, you know, stuff together for you. I do have a tool. It's a food product. Um, Then that's four weeks. Then the second one is the regroup refocus. And that is to deal with mindset and the gut. So I'm going to give you all the modalities that we're going to implement in those six weeks, um, along with addressing the gut. And then the larger program, that's six, that's 12 weeks, sorry. Um, and that is called the renew program because really everybody said that they feel brand new when they come out of the program. And that is everything from mindset to stress management, basically the first two. And then plus the end, the, the last one is dealing with chakra work, chakra education and past trauma. 
Um, so it's really soup to nuts. It's everything. And I deal strictly with the free modalities because there's so much that we can do. And then one, one food gut harmonizing product. That's it. I love it. I love it. And I think for those of you listening, if you're like, wow, I maybe do have gut stuff. Um, I know for the clients we work with, sometimes people are like, it's going to take so long. Right. And it's like, if you can change a lot of stuff and like, you can heal your gut in 30 to 60 days, like over the span of your lifetime, 30, 60 days is such a small amount of time. And the changes that you will start to feel are so incredible. So um, if you guys are, have any questions about your gut health, about mood, about how it all relates, um, reach out to Nicole. She's amazing. Uh, Nicole, thank you for sharing all of your amazing knowledge with us. And um, where can people reach you? I forgot to ask you that question. Where, where can they find you? <laughs> That's okay. Thank you for having me. Um, you can reach me at well, my website, www.myguthut.com um, or I'm also on Instagram, my gut hut, or you can look up my name, Nicole Liamari. So you can Perfect. find me. I'm basically everywhere. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I love the name actually, the gut hut, I think is super easy to remember. So um, yes. I appreciate you being here uh, viewers. We'll see you back here tomorrow for yet another amazing interview. And Nicole, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.